first thing I remember, I just heard an impact. I didn't even know I got hit. I felt the car rolling, and the next thing I know, I was laying on the dashboard of the SUV, and I was looking straight at the windshield, and I knew I was going to go through it. One night in November, Golpar Gotti's SUV was struck from behind. She was thrown through the windshield and hit the pavement of a busy Chicago expressway, face first. Golpar had multiple fractures in her skull, cheekbone, and jaw. Her eye sockets were shattered. Bone fragments had penetrated her brain. She broke just about every bone you can break in your face. Fortunately, in her case, uh, there was no brain injury uh, whatsoever. Uh, we can't say that about every case. Dr. Mark Steinberg was one of the first doctors called in to assess the extent of Golpar's injuries. He is an oral and maxillofacial surgeon and a key member of the trauma team at Loyola University Medical Center. In a single 15-hour operation, Dr. Steinberg and his team reconstructed Golpar's battered head and face. We were able to uh, anatomically reduce the fractures, in other words, line up the bones nicely, then hold them together with small metal plates and screws. And what you're seeing where all the metal plates are, that's her forehead. And you could see that there's many broken bones. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. I was very surprised knowing that um, by coming to Loyola, an OMS could conduct the whole thing during one procedure. In fact, the American College of Surgeons requires that all level one trauma centers have OMSs on call. And in many states, OMSs perform the majority of emergency surgery for injuries to the face, jaws, mouth, and teeth. They are also trained in corrective jaw surgery, as well as a wide variety of reconstructive and cosmetic surgery. Orthognathic surgery is a surgical treatment to correct jaw and facial deformities. And it is deformities that, are, that may be acquired, they may be from an auto accident, they may be developmental, they may be from a birth defect. Just what is an oral and maxillofacial surgeon, and what does it take to become one? Since the early 1900s, oral and maxillofacial surgeons have been pioneers in trauma and reconstructive surgery. Oral and maxillofacial surgery has a very long and illustrious history, dating back to the first orthognathic surgery, which was performed in 1849. OMSs have also treated soldiers and civilians from the time of the Civil War through the First and Second World Wars, Korea, Vietnam, and even up to the present day world conflicts. Training to become an oral and maxillofacial surgeon is rigorous, with a minimum of four years of dental school and four more years of postdoctoral hospital based surgical training. Working with a wide variety of medical specialists, OMSs are trained in trauma management, reconstructive surgery for congenital and acquired defects, and other areas including general surgery, elective cosmetic surgery, internal medicine, and anesthesiology. Their dual background in dentistry and medicine, combined with their residency training, make them uniquely qualified to treat conditions, defects, injuries, and cosmetic aspects of the mouth, jaws, face, teeth, and associated structures. In fact, OMSs perform procedures including extracting impacted teeth, placing dental implants, and reconstructing faces, cheeks, noses, eye sockets, and foreheads. The uniqueness of the oral maxillofacial surgeons, their ability to restore function, their ability to maintain aesthetics in these patients um, helps to alleviate some of the most devastating parts of a trauma patient, and that's what they see every day when they go into the mirror. OMSs also administer outpatient general anesthesia, making them unique from any other specialty in the medical and dental fields outside of anesthesiology. As a result of this training and their ongoing commitment to state and self-regulation, OMSs have an unsurpassed record of safety and cost-effective patient care. The modern anesthesia team consists of the oral and maxillofacial surgeon, trained assistant, state-of-the-art resuscitation equipment, state-of-the-art anesthesia equipment, and in fact, general anesthesia is given many thousands of times a day by oral and maxillofacial surgeons in their private office and their safety record is actually without equal. OMSs are also trained to remove benign and malignant tumors. 
The dark area on this x-ray indicates a large tumor in the lower jaw. After removing it, an OMS rebuilt the jaw using extensive bone grafts and dental implants to replace missing teeth. I think the, uh, the training that an oral maxillofacial surgeon has makes that person uh, unique in treating facial trauma. Some of the incisions that we use, particularly a lot of the intraoral incisions, uh, uh, enable us to hide a lot of the uh, scars quite nicely for the patient. The availability of extraordinarily uh, sophisticated techniques for not only restoration but uh, for reconstruction are all part of what a uh, fully trained and dedicated uh, oral maxillofacial surgeon brings to bear. While known for their trauma expertise, OMSs are also at the forefront of reconstructing congenital and acquired facial defects. Because of the way my jaw fit together, uh, I had an open, an open bite and an overbite, and it was causing muscle spasms, it was causing a lot of jaw pain, uh, a lot of neck pain, and I was having tension headaches, I was having migraines several times a week to the point where I wasn't sure where one began and one ended, you know, they all kind of ran together. We leveled her upper jaw, brought her lower jaw forward and her chin forward. Her orthognathic surgery was done primarily for functional reasons. I had a slight lisp before. I think that's gotten a lot better. And also certain things I couldn't bite through just because of the open bite that I had. I could not bite through lettuce, for example. I could not eat lettuce on a sandwich. Um, pizza was hard to eat <laughs> to bite through the crust. <laughs> This patient's back in college and going on to complete her education. So I think that that clearly shows the medical necessity of the surgery and how well she did with the surgery. I can tell you in some of the patients where I have corrected these kind of deformities, it is amazing to see them six months later with a new feeling about themselves. You're doing this to correct uh, their bite or their speech or their, their jaw function, but you can see a real improvement in their psyche as well, and that's, that's a really neat thing. If I had not done the surgery, I don't know how much my life would have been different. I don't know if I would have had the confidence to uh, do some of the wonderful things that I've done with my life. But I think because of the surgery, I have, I have tried to venture out a little more with my confidence than maybe I would have if I had not had the, the surgery. Patients are also choosing OMSs to perform elective cosmetic procedures of the full facial complex. Katie was referred in as an orthognathic patient, uh, primarily for her underbite and protruding lower jaw. But as we had consultation with Katie, we discovered that her real concern was the appearance of her nose. So we performed orthognathic surgery to correct her underbite by widening her upper jaw by setting her lower jaw back. And in addition, we did a rhinoplasty for cosmetic reasons to reshape her nose. Patients will often come to me for elective cosmetic procedures, such as rhinoplasty. Marge came to me and elected to have the rhinoplasty and was very pleased with her cosmetic outcome. Since I've had the surgery done, I no longer have to worry about my profile. I no longer have to worry if someone is going to make um, a snide remark. And uh, just, I'm just very pleased um, with the results. In addition to rhinoplasty, OMSs also perform a multitude of other elective cosmetic procedures to augment chins, foreheads, and eyes, while enhancing the overall appearance of the face as well. Blepharoplasty is a procedure to reshape or cosmetically recontour the eyelids, be it the upper or lower eyelids. Blepharoplasty is performed through an incision inside the lower eyelid, the same type of incision that we would normally make to treat a fracture of the rim of the orbit. So you can see how those procedures would add to the oral maxillofacial surgeon's area of expertise in treating the cosmetic areas as well. Always with the patient's welfare in mind, OMSs are an essential part of the healthcare team. Whether it be a patient at two in the morning going through a windshield, or it be a gunshot wound, or we're the ones first on the scene called by the emergency room. In addition, we're the ones that treat the orthognathic problems, whether it be a child that has a cleft lip or cleft palate deformity, we're the ones that treat those difficult facial problems. And this makes us eminently qualified to treat the patients with elective facial cosmetic procedures. 
Golfar Gotti's road to recovery began with an oral and maxillofacial surgeon. The surgery to rebuild her face left her with full use of her jaws and facial muscles. Overall, I feel great. I'm so happy with the outcome. I feel I look like what I, you know, looked like before. So I'm very happy, very, very happy. The American Association of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgeons currently has more than 7,000 members. For more information, contact the American Association of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgeons at 800-822-6637 or visit their website at www.aaoms.org.